This is Twit. And now it is time to talk about something I'm very excited about. Uh, joining us to talk about the smart home interoperability protocol matter is Stacy on IoT's Stacy Higginbotham. Welcome back to the show, Stacy. Oh, thank you, Mike. And if I had remembered it was you and how well you dress, I would have gotten way fancier. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes I'm in a hat and a sweater. Like it's it's always, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Uh, so I'm so glad you're here. So happy uh, to talk to you about this because I just saw you um, on stage. You were hosting a panel uh, or moderating a panel about uh, sort of the next wave of what's going to be happening in IoT. And I know I was just talking to uh, my pal and previous co-host, Matthew Casanelli. We used to host a show here on uh, Twit about smart home stuff. And he and I were talking about how, you know, when's matter coming? When's matter coming? So it's here. But before we talk about um, what that means, I think it's important for folks who are just, you know, sort of unplugged from this. Can you tell us what is matter in the first place? Sure. It is a smart home interoperability protocol and all the big names in the industry like Google, Apple, Amazon, Samsung, everybody got together and now there are like 550 companies who are pushing for this. So the idea is to make the smart home interoperable. And you no longer will have to like, oh my gosh, does this work with Nest? Does this work with Google? Does this work with Apple? Is it HomeKit? You can just buy something if it has the Matter logo on it and know that it will work with any other device that has the Matter logo on it, which is really awesome for consumers because that was a huge barrier to entry for any smart home device. The other thing it does that's a little bit more subtle is there are actually security requirements that are part of Matter. So you're going to have device encryption, you're going to have a secure enclave, there's an authentication process. So when you buy a Matter certified device, you're getting some level of security. I mean, this this probably isn't great like for a nation state attack or if you're like the president of the United States, but <laughs> for like normal people, you at least have a sense like, hey, someone's looked at this and and this is secure. This isn't just like sending all my data off to like, I don't know. I was going to say Estonia, but Estonia is actually a nice place. So I can't say that. <laughs> um, so that, and then the final thing it adds is reliability because it's got matter uses both Wi-Fi and the, and the thread network. And uh -huh. the thread network is a super, well, theoretically, this is its big moment to shine. It's <laughs> a mesh network, just like, you know, Zigbee or Z-Wave might be, but it talks out to the internet. It's got some resiliency and it's designed for the smart home. So we're hoping you get that interoperability, security, and reliability. Yeah, all together at once, which, you know, this is the thing is time after time after time, for those of us who've been playing at the very least uh, or have been, you know, super into the smart home, we've heard about all of these different ways that that's, you know, the smart home is finally going to do what we expect of it and it will be this robust network. But I have to tell you, um, Thread for me has finally been that answer because of its uh, the, the nature of the way that each of the individual parts can kind of communicate with one another and they can all talk to each other at the same time. It just it, it's it's finally this um, this protocol, excuse me, this this uh, connectivity protocol where you have um, the situation that adding more makes it better, which it, we've always heard is like, you know, the more smart home devices you have, the more things get clogged up, the less likely that they'll. And this time it's like, yeah, you've got all these nodes now. They all can kind of talk to each other, create this this sort of uh, hidden network in your home that lets everything communicate with one another. And I think that uh, because of, as you pointed out, Thread's time to shine, um, that is where I have uh, from from folks who've asked me about what's coming. I've seen so much confusion about where thread falls in, in regard to matter and kind of how those two work together. But before we talk about that, one of the things that I uh, wanted to touch on is you mentioned that, you know, you you see the matter logo or the matter badge on a product and you know that it will work with other matter stuff. Um, it's true then that I could uh, get, say, an Amazon uh, branded uh, light bulb, for example, let's say that Amazon had a light bulb that was uh, connected to the internet. And if Apple 
goes through with its matter stuff, as I know it is, then I could talk to S-I-R-I, the assistant on my HomePod, and be able to control that light from Amazon? Yes, and even more. You could actually have, maybe you have Lady S running around your house, probably not running, sitting in a HomePod mini somewhere. (laughs) Um, You've got an Amazon Echo and you're talking to Madam A. You could actually install that light bulb one time in your house and it's a nice install. The provisioning under batter is really, really nice. Um, It's a QR code based. It looks a lot, if you're familiar with HomeKit, it looks a lot like that. You'll put that device on your network and both Amazon's device and Apple's device will see it, will recognize that it's a light bulb and will let you control it from either of those two places. That's Mm. not everybody is running probably complex homes like we are, but that's actually really cool because it also means like, let's say you're sick of Madam A and you're like, I just got the new iPhone and I'm all in on HomeKit. You could actually not have to uninstall all those devices and then reinstall them. It's just going to like be like, boom, switch over. (laughs) See, that's that's really nice. And I think that that is what. Uh, can help to reduce some of the friction or the uh, the, the lack of adoption that might take place uh, that people have right now, the, the fear of adopting a new technology because they don't know, can I use this? Can I not use this? Will it work with what I already have? What if I decide, as you point out, you know, that I don't want ALEXA in my home anymore or I don't want um, the, I, I can't even say the G one because I can we say- We say, hey, G. There we go. Hey, G, that that works because I, the other t- day I said, hey, boo boo. And even that triggered it and had it uh, listening to me. So <laughs> I have to be very careful with that one anyway. Um, so who all is involved with matter? Because I think that that also plays a big role in why we're finally seeing this. <gasps> this could actually be the one. So they're like I said, there are 550 companies that are part of the matter working group and the CSA. The CSA is the Connectivity Standards Alliance. You probably formerly knew it as the Zigbee. Uh, Zigbee Alliance? Yeah. yeah yes. I, think that's I, think, it was. I was like, it was, it was like this. Agency? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Zigbee Alliance. And what happens is, or what happened was when Zigbee got the, it was called Project Chip Working Group originally, connected home over IP. Um, they were like, hey, we're going to bring this in. And everyone was like, cool, it's going to be way bigger than Zigbee. So what are you going to call yourselves? And about a year or two ago, they said, hey, we're going to be the Connectivity Standards Alliance. So they're the overarching group that does the certification. And the companies involved are pretty much everyone you're thinking of in the smart home ecosystem. There's chip companies, there's the device companies, there are consulting companies, there's a lot. And it's Mm -hmm. not just smart home. Some of it is like Schneider Electric is involved because they think they can bring this technology to buildings. Mm. And yeah, buildings. So there's (laughs) a lot of people, there's a lot of ways that this could play out. But first and foremost, we're going to see it in the smart home. And yeah, Eddie, I mean, I feel like you'd be better off like naming names and I'd be like, yes, the only one that I found that isn't a one that people are surprised by is Microsoft. They are not. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I guess that, yeah, that is kind of a a shock, but certainly, yeah, Google and Apple and Samsung with the, with the smart things platform. Right. And um, all sorts of other companies. One of my darlings, uh, the Eve devices, the, uh, I can't think of what the, I think they're Eve systems now. They're Uh, Eve systems. Yeah, and of course they're they're part of it uh, as well. Now, let's talk about it's so <laughs> there've been delays, there've been um announcements, there've been changes, there've been this, there's been that. Um now that it is official, first of all, what does it mean by it being officially available and then uh, looking a little bit more forward, how long until people start to see that matter badge on products and how long until I can start going around to all of my different things and doing firmware updates <laughs> than I actually have matter in my home? So you should be able to start doing firmware updates right away. I mean, mm. as soon as they're released. So like Apple, for example, has actually been supporting matter, like the basics of matter in Oh, what iOS are we on right now? 16. It's iOS 16. Yeah. (laughs) 16.1 is the current beta that has matter in it. Yeah. 
Okay, so they, I think they're, they're, it's still in beta because some things aren't quite right. But basically what happened on Tuesday is they said, here it is official. This is frozen in time. This is v version 1.0 of matter. Now you can go and get certified. But over the summer, they actually had like 280 different companies participate in tests and certification efforts. Uh -huh. And so there's like about 4,000 devices that are matter certified today. And with the certification, you get an SDK. So you get a software development kit that you can download and start applying almost, I'm going to say almost instantly, but we all know that like when you mess around with software, you're going to want to test it. You're going to want to, <laughs> right, things yes. will probably happen. Um, but it's not like a huge lift from if you've been preparing for it, if you have like your, if your device has the radios it needs, which again, thread and Wi-Fi. Um, and if you have a Zigbee radio and enough memory, you can actually convert that to thread, believe it oh. or not. Yeah. Oh, that's they have cool. the same. I didn't know that. Yeah. They're the same underlying uh, phi. So 802.15.4 is Got they're it. both the same there. Um, so you can upgrade all that. Not everybody will. Not all devices will get that update. Um, and most vendors have already established like Philips Hue. They said, yeah, we're supporting matter. We're going to do it, you know, at the hub. Um, so those devices, the bulbs won't be matter compliant, but the hub will, and it'll talk to the bulbs and that'll bridge everything. There's a couple I'm still waiting for. Like I'm still waiting for my, my darling, which is Lutron. Uh, they are yes. a member of the CSA, but I don't, I assume they'll just update their hub, which has Wi-Fi. Um, mm -hmm. But who knows? Um, so, yeah, so you should start seeing this any day now. I mean, like I am, I am forcing updates on things and looking. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I, yeah. So, so, I mean, that's kind of where we are and yeah. Awesome. Well, I know that Google recently updated the uh, home app on it's uh, on Android to uh, better make, make way for matter. Is that, is that the case? They have said that they're, they said that they're going to have a preview app for, sorry, they're going to preview the home app in the next couple of weeks. And next year, they're going to have a new version of the home app. That doesn't mean they're not supporting Matter in their devices beforehand. And it and they have talked about building Matter into Android. I believe you're going to see some features sooner. But like the things I'm looking forward to in the home app are things like using sensors to like create my own routines. Mm -hmm. That's going to come in the, that, that'll be available, it looks like, more next year or in preview versions sometime later this year. Okay. And I'll hopefully okay. get the preview and be like rocking out with my like, I really want to be able to say, hey, when this motion sensor triggers between these hours, set off this crazy range of things happening. It's going to be awesome. right. Yeah, it will be awesome. And th especially because um, this is built with the local network in mind. So the uh, the what is the word I'm looking for? Responsiveness of it is is a lot better uh, versus where, you know, if this and that, which is I know a lot of people use and love, uh, but it can take some time at times to actually do all of the things that you wanted to do. So having it all happen uh, as close to the local network as possible and particularly with thread. I mean, I've got uh, an Eve door and window sensor, which, you know, it's a contact sensor essentially, and it is using thread over home kit. And I kid you not, even though it's just got one tiny little battery in it and uh, would otherwise take when it was just Bluetooth, it would take a million years to actually do anything. The second now that the door opens and I have it set to specific times of day, um, it will notify me the second it opens. Hey, the door has been opened. Hey, the door has been closed. And it used to be like, you'd open the door, you'd wait. And then maybe it would tell you, maybe it wouldn't And then you go, Oh, okay. Then you close the door. And then an hour later, it'd be like your door open and closed. <laughs> that was Bluetooth thread has been incredible, uh, just in home kit. So once this, this sort of bigger rollout happens and I can start to kind of add even more devices to that, I think that it also will mean that I'll get a lot more use out of, I keep pointing behind me cause I've got an echo, um, I can't remember what they're called now, uh, but I've got some I've got some Amazon stuff and some Google stuff back there that uh, all just kind of 
it, it, you know, it, it cycles between photos, but uh, outside of that, I don't use it much. But I think when Matter hits, uh, being able to just use whichever one I want to use at any time is going to be exciting. Uh, anything else yeah. that you'd like to show? Oh, it, maybe you did have something there. Please well, I was going to say two things for you. One, the latency on Thread is awesome. We've compared it to Zigbee and Z-Wave. So if you're an old school home like automation person, you're going to be like, how does it ring? so much better. It's super fast. And two, because you mentioned you have Eve, Thread, because it's this is its moment. It's going out in millions of homes with this matter certification. Like Comcast is going to start updating its 20 million homes to like operate with Thread, right? Wow. That's going to be crazy. Um, Eve, their app has in this settings, you can actually see your Thread network and that includes like all your nodes and then they have this thing called a border router that lets you talk to like the Wi-Fi network. Mm -hmm. That is an awesome troubleshooting tool and I've been recommending it to anybody who as you're starting out with this, if you have an Eve device, I believe you have to have an Eve device, but you should, they're really good devices. Um, you can actually see not just those devices on your Thread network, but your entire network and the topology of the network. And it's pretty cool for troubleshooting. So that's my pro tip for you. There we go. Well, Stacy, I want to thank you so much for taking some time to uh, join us today to talk about Matter. Of course, folks can head over to stacyoniot.com to stay up to date with what's happening and uh, hopefully get to hear your thoughts as uh, you, you get those previews over the coming months as well. Uh, but if folks want to follow you online and check out all the great work you're doing, where should they go to do so? Uh, at GigaStacy on Twitter or stacyoniot.com is where you can find me. Awesome. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thanks.